Hi, everyone. It's still May 3rd, 2021. I don't know if any of you feel like you're just really sick with everything that's going on in this country, but I am. I feel like the new definition of American means Fruit Loops on a bad acid trip. Yeah, I am getting so disgusted with how profoundly, profoundly sick are most Americans because we would never have manifested the reality that we are living unless the majority of the American people are sick. That's how it manifests. It manifests when so many Americans go along just to get along, go along with everything that's going on, never calling anybody out, not having any courage to stand up to what amounts to bullshit. And that's what we're living. And I don't like life uh, becoming this meaningless thing. But that's what it's become. It's, uh, I like sane. I like healthy. I like life meaningful, you know. I like to trust people. I like to establish healthy relationships. None of that. None of that has been possible. CIA recruitment ad ridiculed for overdosing on woke. Oh, the woke. Yes. How, how, how has woke uh, lasted more than 24 hours? How? Okay. Yeah, woke talking points. This woman. All right, I'm going to show you this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. When I was 17, I quoted Zora Neale Hurston's How It Feels to Be Colored Me in my college application essay. The line that spoke to me stated simply, I am not tragically colored. There is no sorrow dammed up in my soul nor lurking behind my eyes. I do not mind at all. At 17, I had no idea what life would bring, but Sora's sentiment articulated so beautifully how I felt as a daughter of immigrants then and now. Nothing about me was or is tragic. I am perfectly made. I can wax eloquent on complex legal issues in English while also belting Guayaquil de mis amores in Spanish. I can change a diaper with one hand and console a crying toddler with the other. I am a woman of color. I am a mom. I am a cisgender millennial who's been diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. I am intersectional, but my existence is not a box checking exercise. I am a walking declaration, a woman whose inflection does not rise at the end of her sentences, suggesting that a question has been asked. I did not sneak into CIA. My employment was not and is not the result of a fluke or slip through the cracks. I earned my way in, and I earned my way up the ranks of this organization. I am educated, qualified, and competent, and sometimes I struggle. I struggle feeling like I could do more, be more to my two sons, and I struggle leaving the office when I feel there's so much more to do. I used to struggle with imposter syndrome, but at 36, I refuse to internalize misguided patriarchal ideas of what a woman can or should be. I am tired of feeling like I'm supposed to apologize for the space I occupy rather than intoxicate people with my effort, my brilliance. I am proud of me, full stop. My parents left everything they knew and loved to expose me to opportunities they never had. Because of them, I stand here today a proud first-generation Latina and officer at CIA. I am unapologetically me. I want you to be unapologetically you, whoever you are. Know your worth. Command your space. You know, it's usually the case when people have to declare 
these affirmations about their own self, it comes from a place of insecurity. Oh, CIA, okay. Yeah, generalized anxiety. Uh, cisgender, I'm cisgender. Does that mean she's straight? I guess, I don't know. All I know is this woke crap is really, it's just, it, 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 it's really annoying. <laughs> annoying? Oh, that's an understatement. Yeah. Ain't you, ain't you wonderful? What, what? I mean, okay. I would be so friggin' embarrassed to do this, but hey. It's the new normal. So Baltimore puts up this uh, PSA, I guess. Get vaxxed. Mimosas with the girls this weekend. It's a bad idea. Bad idea if you haven't been vaxxed. What? Okay. They apparently got slammed for it. But yeah, it does look like a domestic violence ad. Uh, you still aren't vaxxed, Deborah. How dare you go out with the girls? Baltimore City Health Department. Well, they too got slammed. Oh my God. This is sickening. This is the darkest effing timeline. I'm so happy to see you using male domination as a means to control Deborah's interactions with her friends. That's so virtue signaling of you. In real life, Deborah would tell him to shove it up his ass, throw his clothes on the street, then skip the mimosas for a shot of tequila. <laughs> Okie dokie. So, another one. Uh, one of the replies mentioned oh great so in our woke culture now you Baltimore decide to put up one of the three rich white people in Baltimore for your PSA to get vaccinated I mean really a white couple Heteros uh, are they cisgender Sad. This is what happened in order for Oregon's health authority to change their masking rules for outdoor sports. Good afternoon, I'm Lee Anderson. A runner from Summit High School collapsed during competition. Now the Oregon Health Authority is updating its mask policy for outdoor sports. Max Goldwasser breaks down the details. Maggie Williams just seconds away from setting the Summit School record in the 800 meter. A moment of glory. Overshadowed by this moment of concern. Williams finished in two minutes and eight seconds, collapsing as she crossed the finish line. I felt like I just wasn't being able to get a full breath and multiple times of that happening, not being able to get enough air. It just, I just felt super dizzy and then eventually passed out. Williams blames her lack of oxygen on the mask she's required to wear during competition. Clearly in the past this has never happened and then this race that I was wearing a mask it did happen which I don't think is a coincidence. Her coach echoing that belief saying this was not a conditioning issue it was a mask issue. It was a different response than I've seen for kids that have uh, collapsed to the track just because they were exhausted. She wasn't sure where she was. Turnbull told News Channel 21 he considered not letting his athletes run again with the current guidelines in place. So he and Williams called on the Oregon Health Authority to make a change. We were so fortunate this didn't end up in a, a real serious injury with Maggie, but we shouldn't gamble on the next one. OHA listened, releasing this updated mask mandate Monday afternoon. The guidance will allow people to take off face coverings when competing in non-contact sports outdoors and maintaining at least six feet of distance from others and the other virus protective protocols. All right. Uh, I'm having a problem with this because it seems that they can take off the mask when competing. What about practice? 
That's all I can say on YouTube. You still aren't vaxxed, Deborah. City of Baltimore mocked a Republican information campaign. As you can see, I have not organized my Americans' fruit loops on bad acid pages for this video. But, yeah, people are not happy about it. Look at that abusive relationship. Yeah, Deborah, listen to your guilt trippy boyfriend. <sighs> Friendly reminder to go get that vaccine if you haven't already, especially if your name is Deborah. City of Baltimore trying to convince the three rich white women who live in that city to get vaxxed. You still aren't vaxxed, Deborah. Oh my God. Well, what else do I have? I have, really, how much revenue tech giants like Amazon and Apple make per minute. Per minute. This guy looks like an alien. Per minute. Amazon. Per minute. 837,330. <laughs> three, three. Three, uh, $330.25 per minute. Apple. 691,234.57 cents. Alphabet, Google, four hundred and twenty-six thousand, nearly half a million. Microsoft, three hundred and twenty-one. Facebook, two hundred and one, nearly two hundred and two. Uh, Telsa, Tesla, eighty thousand. Netflix, fifty-five. Is something wrong with this picture? That's in 2021 because they gutted out small business all over the country. And, well, you've got to stay home and you're non-essential. So your business closes down. You're non-essential. So you can't work. So people had to rely on online shopping, Amazon. Boy, those lockdowns sure did make these companies, wow, much richer than they were already. Chocolate shop in Seattle refused service to two police officers, and now I guess we'll just wait for Webster's Dictionary to change the definition of tolerance. Yes, that's what the left does. Just, hey, you got an agenda, and, you know, those uh, traditional definitions don't work for you. Just change it. Infrastructure. In infrastructure. No longer is just buildings and streets, and no, now it's child care and care for families and education. And, okay, uh, well, tolerance uh well, on the left, it just means intolerance. So, yeah, a police officer comes in just to get some chocolate. And too bad for you. Too bad for you. This is post-millennium site. Um, Seattle. And, you know, have you noticed that Pretty much everything now is just hostile or angry or fighting about every little thing and being greeted by people who work in businesses and you're the customer, but you're treated like shit and, uh-huh, post-millennial contacted Chocolate for comment and a store employee answered the phone. Upon informing the employee of the purpose of the call, the employee said to post-millennial, Is this how you want to spend your time? 
getting essential workers in trouble? You're an essential worker and you sell chocolate? Really? I think you think very highly of yourself. The employee continued, shouldn't you be spending your time harassing homeless people? <laughs> the post-millennial suggested leaving a number for the owner or manager, to which the employee responded, you really want to spend your time getting essential workers in trouble. Okay, and then the post-millennial said that we would attempt to reach an owner or manager another time. The employee agreed that would be preferable and then added, go F yourself. Oh boy, I've gotten that. We're just so warm and fuzzy here in our country. Love. It's just all around. So, uh, all right. You know, my sister's favorite vacation spot is Disneyland. I could imagine her like this. Disneyland reopening seems to be an emotional event for some. Crying. Yes, it's, it's so, oh my God, it's finally open. Cupcake culture. We've just gone too far. Those are some effed up people. Well, we've got a lot of them here in our fabulous, exceptional, morally superior country. USA, USA, USA. Yeah. I wonder how they would handle real problems. But this is not a problem. It's reopening. Tears of joy. This is very sad. I wake up every morning and kiss my family goodbye. Knowing that there's a possibility I won't come home. I am tired of every time I wake up in the morning, there's someone else polarizing the fact that maybe law enforcement is just not a good thing. All of us are not bad. I am not as they are. Most of us are not. There are bad people in every career. I'm so goddamn tired. 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 He is a college security officer, and now a lot of colleges are, well, defund all police on campuses. This is what happens when we throw the individuals of a particular category, group, uh, well, you know, we don't look at the individual themselves, but because he's a security officer, he has to deal with everything that's going on. There are police and security officers who are good, and they should be propped up. Instead of defund the police, how about we begin to you know, obsessively focus on the good. Maybe that would shift, you know. Maybe the police would begin to really want to be good so that they would get, you know, praise and attention. I don't know. Oh, man. I'm sorry, sir. Close it again? Oh, that, I really am disorganized tonight. I'm just too tired. I am like, well, this comes. <laughs> I thought that was great. Disneyland reopening seems to be an emotional event for some. Close it again. <laughs> just close it again. 
<sighs> well, everyone's talking about the breakup of Bill and Melinda, and I don't give a shit. CNN, the Biden administration, is considering using outside firms to track extremist chatter by Americans online, an effort that would expand the government's ability to gather intel but could draw criticism over surveillance of citizens. I love it when they come out with these kinds of stories, these headlines, and they've been using private, private companies to surveil Americans for ma a whole long time. Americans don't know that. CNN. The number one lying network. Okay, have you seen this? Boy, you know, there are so many black Americans who are so done with all of the BLM, the woke crap, the critical race theory in our schools, getting fed up. They're all over social media, but they're not getting the attention that I feel they and we need. For those of us who are not black men, imagine watching the news and seeing how people... Imagine being a black man and being told by some white lady with a microphone that you and the criminal on TV are one and the same because you look alike. Imagine being told by society that white people can be all that they can be, but you as a black man, the content of your character is completely irrelevant. You are the color of your skin and that is all you will ever be. Imagine being told you can't figure out how to vote because of the color of your skin. Socioeconomics affects everyone, but apparently you're not as smart as the poorest white person. Lady, I don't want to hate you. I'm a 90s kid. I grew up with you, so I know you're very talented. I understand your heart is in the right place, but you are everything you preach against. You're not helping. You're making things worse. You're causing more division. You're causing more fear. Statistically speaking, I am more likely to be shot and killed by my black elderly neighbor across the street than the cop who patrols my neighborhood. Statistically speaking, homicide by cop is very rare, but people like you find power in fear, so you keep it front page news. You don't have to be a white supremacist. You can be better. Was that not brilliant? You don't have to be a white supremacist, which she is, because she and, well, the woke, the woke crowd, they denigrate black Americans. Now, that's what is so insane about critical race theory and all of this that's going on. They're denigrating black Americans, and that really upsets me. You know, because, well, uh, whites are smarter. Whites are better. That's why we now have to uh, experience, you know, the um, denigration. Uh, and that's why we have to get rid of all advanced classes, you know, in high schools and junior high schools. Because, you know, black Black students, they just, well, you know, they can't handle it. So we have to make everyone, all of these students, you know, equity, outcome, everyone the same. Which means bringing everybody down. Well, guess what? It's an amazing thing. If you just kind of pay attention, you see an awful lot of black Americans who are scholars, who are academics, who are professors, who are, well, on mainstream media, um, they hold positions of power, they're uh, CEOs. Oh, my God, how is it possible that we've got so many successful black Americans if we are a racist country? How did that happen? How did it happen? I guess they just squeaked through. Yes. Very powerful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Much needed. And everybody, regardless of color, needs to be speaking out about this racism 
the woke, white supremacist, uh, Nazi, woke culture. We all need to be putting these people in their place because they are creating an awful lot of division, and that's not what we need, not at all. Venezuela, hyperinflation. Here, when we start to deal with the hyperinflation, this is what you can do with our paper money. Yo la artesanía la hago con todos estos billetes porque en verdad en Venezuela no puedo hacer nada con ellos. Yo con esa paca no puedo comprar ni una harina, ni una harina nada, nada, no puedo comprar nada. Entonces como no, en verdad no puedo comprar nada, los lo uso para hacer arte de salida. Well, that's one hell of a creative guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, more healthcare workers who are overworked and overwhelmed, but they have time for your TikTok dancing break. <coughs> no, I'm good, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> okay. Well, Canada, you've got talent. U.S. becomes the collapsed Soviet Union. Why is this right here? Because we apparently have an awful lot of people in line for a new White Castle opening up. White Castle? Are you kidding? Um, White Castle, when I was growing up, Every now and then we went to White Castle, those little square things that I guess they call a hamburger. Um, what's going on with people's brains? This is the line for a new White Castle. We've seen this periodically when new hamburger joints open up, but uh, really? This is, you want to know the time? 9 a.m. White Castle in Orlando, 9 a.m. Well, <clears throat> I guess that those in Orlando don't have much to do. You know, nothing really of importance. So they can wait for their White Castle Hamburger at 9 a.m.? <clears throat> 9 a.m. You know, they open at 9 a.m.? All right, I don't, I just don't know. Now, um, phew, bribing school, uh, high school bribing kids with graduation credits if they get vaccinated. Local high school, um, this high school has a requirement of 55 hours of community service. If they get vaccinated, they can have 25 hours knocked off. And, well, parents are pissed. Uh, the school says there's no coercion. 
Students can choose any of the options or suggest their own. One father disagrees. He slammed the decision to place incentives on getting a vaccine. He argues it can diminish the role of parents in determining if a vaccine is the right move. Well, that, that sounds quite right. He argues linking the vaccine to an important requirement for graduating high school seems to be a sleight of hand by the school to influence young men and women into a decision they might not otherwise make. Yeah. Why is it then when it just seems like there are so many obviouses that are going over people's heads lately that are it's just Fruit Loops on a bad trip. Fruit Loops. Bad acid. Don't know what to say. Don't know what to say. Well, how about this? I'll end right here. Um, Oh, but you know what? Did I skip over um, Caitlyn Jenner's? Yeah, I did. <gasps> I'm sorry. One second here. Where is it? Oh. Here. Okay. Um, so, you know, Caitlyn Jenner is running for governor in California as a Republican. Um, she's transgender, as we all know, and she was stopped in this parking lot and asked about these transgender females competing with cisgender females in high school. Well, that should really just be a no-brainer that you, because, okay, a transgendered female is still um, in a, a body of a biological boy. And that biological boy is generally much stronger than the girls. So, Caitlyn Jenner, and forget about how you feel about her personally and her being a transgender, forget about all of that. What she is saying should be a no-brainer at all. So there's legislation in various states to ban biological boys who are trans from playing girl sports in school. What's your opinion on that? Uh, in back. In. This is a question of fairness. That's why I oppose biological boys who are trans competing in girl sports in school. It just isn't fair. And we have to protect girl sports in our but, school. But, but if someone transitions and now identifies as a girl, isn't it delegitimate? It is a matter of fairness. She's absolutely right. She is right on. And... Of course, she gets slammed. Slammed. She writes, uh, I didn't expect to get asked this on my Saturday morning coffee run, but I'm clear about where I stand. It's an issue of fairness, and we need to protect girls' sports in our schools. Yes, but we can't have reasonable discussion about anything anymore. Good luck with your campaign. Is this supposed to save Newsom? Uh, you just lost the race. Cringe. I didn't expect to get asked this on my Saturday morning coffee run. Really? Really? You're running for office as a trans woman? Was this inconvenient for you? Really? I can't with you 
and you're out of touch, ignorant, BS, pathetic. Just say no to both, girl. Uh, uh, uh. You are such a traitor. So we need to protect girl sports from other girls now? Sorry, they still have the body of a biological boy. So, she's right. But of course, you know, Americans come out with such hatred that they can't even consider what, what she is saying. You know, she's a traitor to the transgender community. Yeah. I don't like living in this country anymore. I really don't. So what do you tell the athlete? Can't play with the gender they identify with? Yes. Yeah. Hey, Debbie O. Yeah. And, oh, my God. Well, you know, look. They wanted to create an awful lot of division and confusion and, and hatred towards one another. And, you know, boy, talk about, talk about diverting to each other the anger that we really uh, should be expressing toward those who are destroying our lives. Perhaps like, you know, in government uh, positions and like the White House and Congress and Oh yeah, but let's let's get on Caitlyn Jenner for saying something so obvious and reasonable. And we can't have reasonable discussion anymore. So let's just mm, get her on social media. Yay. But of course, NATO has that social media hybrid war. So we don't really know. We don't really know. I would think that most Americans would agree with Caitlin. But, as you can see, uh, girls belong in girl sports, trans girls are girls. There is no evidence of trans girls outperforming their cis peers. Yes, there is. But, hey, just write something stupid on Twitter. Make it hateful. And bada boom, you got it going. What about you guys who are American? Do you like living in this country anymore? 